All right, what I want to talk today is a very, 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 very important. How many times I say very? <laughs> I'm not talking about resurrection, the resurrection of Christ. It will have, why it's so important for us. And I'm going to use the verb reason, from the verb rise, reason, and uh, I'm going to show where to to see where I found it in the context of the resurrection of Christ. Okay. First of all, I know that uh, reason is found is found uh, <clears throat> fifty uh, fifty one times, fifty five matches. Okay. All right. So we read about the resurrection. In, uh, in the Gospels, there are the letters. Okay, definition. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The four phases of the Messiah of Israel. Mark, Matthew, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The royalty, the king, the king of Israel. Mark, the ox, the servant, the servant of the Lord. Luke. The Son of Man, the face of the angel. And then John, the Son of God. Christ is God. Why for Gospels? <laughs> it's like God in His wonderful love and care for every detail of the precious Word. When I give you, me, us, and everyone out there the opportunity to know, to examine, to know the perfection of His own only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in His manhood, when He's, uh, you know, incarnated, as well in His, the fact that He's God, the God-man. You know that the Word of God and the Word of God, the Word of God the written word, the word, the capital W seven times says Christ before incarnation that gets incarnated. He came. Where did you go? Did you go to Rome? Moscow, Stalingrad, New York, Los Angeles? No, he went to Jerusalem. He went to Israel. He was born a Jew under the under the law. He was born by the power of of the Holy Ghost, conceived by the Holy Ghost. So Christ, in his birth, in his birth, my my English is terrible, so I apologize. You know, I'm Italian. I, I don't know what I speak. Birth, birth, in his birth, fulfilled Genesis three fifteen, Isaiah seven fourteen. Not to mention all the references to the Psalms. One thing is sure, he fulfilled so many prophecies. Then you have to be really either ignorant, like you ignore, you don't know, you don't read, you don't study, or the pure words of God, or you must be a person that really doesn't want to know God, he doesn't want to believe, or we, <laughs> maybe, sorry, I got to tell you, don't, don't hate me, a fool. <laughs> because in Psalm 14, in Psalm 53, in Psalm in those Psalms, in verse 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Anyway, in the four Gospels, we know Christ, according to his earthly ministry, to his prophetic ministry, as the greatest prophet, really, prophesied by Moses, a prophet like unto me, you know, among your brethren, the Lord your God will rise. Of course, he was talking about Christ. He is the prophet. He is also the Messiah, the Christos, the Messiah, the Anointed. He's also the King of Israel. Praise God. He is also the High Priest for Israel. A nation, a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, priests and kings unto the Lord. That's not us, the body of Christ. I will say this. 
The shepherd of Israel, the great shepherd of, of the sheep. The shepherd that gets cut through, you know, get hit. Uh, okay. <laughs> hit and the, and the sheep get, you know, scattered. You know, I'm going with my memory, recollecting the information. So because I'm an old man and my memory is faulty, sometimes you, 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 you hear me like, uh, you know, those engines. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> But what is important to know, the Christ in his earthly ministry made it very clear in Matthew 15, 24. I need to show you this because if I don't show you, you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know why this is not going back. Oh, yeah, I know why. I know why, because it's part of the same. Matthew 15, 24. 15. Oh, man, what's happening? Jumping on Matthew 15 24. Maybe it would be good if I do this in a different way, but doesn't matter. 15 24. He said very clearly, <clears throat> but he answer said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When after years and years and years of denominational Christianity, 11 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, I came to know this, I, saw, I thought, well, what's wrong here, man? You know, all those years in church, nobody preached this to me, ever. The so-called pastors, teachers, or what? He also said, I'm not sent unto the Lord's ship. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, I am not the sheep of the house of Israel, and you are neither. There are no sheep of the house of Israel now. His, his ministry was to his earthly nation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we know, don't we? There's been rebellion, sin, pollution in heaven and earth. Almighty God, you can beat him. Satan and his fallen gods. In, a, in that challenge, <laughs> they show the, the total madness of sin, you know, thinking they can win against Almighty God. So God has one program to restore the earth and the dominion of the earth to himself, utilizing the nation that he creates. He creates Israel, which means from Jacob, the supplanter, Israel, prince with God. And the twelve tribes. When he came the second time to Israel, that's the second coming of Christ to Israel. There are first coming, recorded in the four gospels, prophesied three hundred times, more than three hundred prophecies concerning his first coming. When he's gonna come the second time, also those prophesies, and they're gonna get fulfilled literally, like because that's God. This is the word of God. I don't know about you, but people are going around with this piece of paper, they call Bibles, the NIV, non-inspired version, ESV, English, English, shameful version. <laughs> when we have this royal King James Bible, oh well, praise God, Jesus said very clearly, God is the possessor of heaven and earth, almighty God, Abraham knew this possessor of heaven and earth. Satan created Avak and rebellion in heaven. And then, of course, there is, uh, you know, there is a rebellion on earth because Satan goes there to tempt Eve. Adam and Eve, they fell. Practically, they doubted the word of God. They didn't believe and they fell. So sin, death, destruction, the curse on earth. So we have these two creations, two, this realm. Heaven and earth were polluted, and God has got a program for both. One is prophetic, goes all the way, practically from Genesis to math to Acts eight. At Acts eight, something glorious happened. The Lord 
saves and calls a commission is enemy number one. So of Tarsus becomes Paul, he makes a meeting with the apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles, and gives to him and to him alone the ministry to preach reconciliation through the revelation of the mystery which was hid in God, knowing the scripture for ages and, and, and generation, but now has been revealed to Paul and to Paul, to, from Paul to us. Guess what? In all those years, religion, in my denomination, where I belonged, Pentecost. But also, you know, I've been with the Baptist, but it's been there. I mean, you know, I was a bit of popery of, uh, not forgetting the fact I was born and raised Roman Catholic. Anyway, yeah, I am a 74 years old man. 11 years ago, pew, finally, I, I came to mid Acts right division site, how to rightly divide the word of truth as is written in 2 Timothy 2.15. It's a study to show the self-approved done to God, not to your local pastor, your friend, your mom, your wife, your husband, your friend, you know, your cousin, your ancestor. Study to show the self-approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A sham, which means a void, right? I'm no English, whatever. Vain and profane babblings, because it will increase unto more ungodliness. Yeah, <laughs> religion is full of babblings. I came to understand, all right, there is a prophetic program, and there is a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, his earthly minister to his earthly nation Israel, which rejected him. By large, you know, the majority of them. They had to be born again. They had to be born again. Water and spirit. Believing that he was the Messiah, the King of Israel. Receiving as such, confessed his name. So he could, he would confess their name in the presence of the Father and his holy angels. He said it to Nicodemus. Marvel not. <laughs> you know, Nicodemus, I tell you. I tell thee, Nicodemus, that ye, the nation, must be born again. Now, of course, in the that version, you, you, you don't see the difference, because they, they say, now this thing is too difficult. Let's say you. You at this point includes, you know. <laughs> you don't know if it's singular, it's singular or plural, but the reality is, well, you know, that uh, I said to thee, Nicodemus, that ye, the nation, must be born again. All the nation have to be born Again, to see the kingdom that was coming, to enter in the kingdom, following the king, Jesus Christ, the great king. Paul says, you know, the only wise God, the king immortal, <laughs> invisible, glory, glory to God. And so we have the four gospels. The answer said, I'm not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I made sure in Matthew 10, and so forth. When he sent the 12, why 12? He said, why 12? 12 tribes, 12 princes of Israel, to the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, they're going to reign with him, you know, sitting on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel in the resurrection. When Christ is going to reign, King of kings and Lord of lords, it's going to, it's going to be 1,000 years Millennium means millennium, 1,000 years of reign of Christ on earth. And the earth is going to see what it is when righteousness and goodness of God and the love of God reign in Christ. Okay, with the rod of iron, you know. <laughs> the point is, what about heaven? Because there's been pollution in heaven. There are four levels of principality, powers, dominions and thrones. Satan, the god of this world, keeps people blind to the glorious gospel of Christ. He, he says, you want to believe in Jesus, he gives you another Jesus. In other words, a Jesus that can't save you. The prophetic, if you stay with the prophetic, you cannot get saved. You need the revelation of the mystery. You need the gospel of the cross. You need to understand that now Christ from heaven speaks to Paul and through Paul to us. Paul, Acts 9.15, is a chosen vessel unto him to bear his name to the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. And gives to him the glorious gospel of Christ, completely different from the gospel of the kingdom. 
Because I'm going to talk about reason, remember? I'll tell you. Because in this gospel of the cross, you don't need to do anything. You need simply to acknowledge, to believe, and receive it by grace through faith. No works on your side, the work of God. Receive the free gift of eternal life. And remember that not only saves you eternally, it seals you eternally. Three times it's written, the earnest of our inheritance, the sealing of the Holy Ghost. After we believe the gospel of the, the grace of God, which is the gospel of the cross. The gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, 24. The gospel of Christ, Acts uh, Romans 1, 16, when Paul says, write emphatically, and I love it, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Of course, the corrupt Bible, I omit Christ, just put gospel, so you can put any gospel in, you know, even the gospel of Moses. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, the power of God, the power of God. People say, oh, what the power of God? I give you the power of God. It's the power of God, No, your power. The gospel of Christ. The power of God unto salvation, not to condemnation. Salvation, God, the will of God in this, the dispensation of grace of God, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, He will have all men, all men, all men, north, south, east and west. Are you Palestinian? Are you a Jew? You are, a, a, you know, a Italian, a Australian, Japanese, Chinese, African, and North America, ask him, it doesn't matter, God wants to save you. Jesus Christ shed his precious blood to give atonement to anyone who simply believes him and receives this glorious gospel without works on our part. It's the work of God, it's the operation of God. It's very wonderful, it's glorious. We're going to go there in details. But what I want to say to you, my dear friend, is we have to divide, we have to write it by the word of truth, we have to understand also, you know, the prophetic program goes from Genesis to Acts 8. The book of Acts, anyway, is a book of transition because without Acts, you would not understand how in the world you go from the last gospel of John, all Jewish, there are no Gentiles there, all of a sudden you go to Romans, what? Corinthian. <laughs> what is that? Ephesians, Thessalonians, Philippians, Colossians, come on now, Galatians. Gentiles. And the Romans? <laughs> yeah, there are many Jews inside. <laughs> because this gospel at that time saved the Jew then. They, they missed the gospel of the kingdom. They could still be saved by believing the gospel that the Lord committed to the Apostle Paul, the gospel of Christ. You do no works, no other baptisms. We are baptized by the Spirit into the death of Christ for the sake of identification. So you have two programs. The ministry program which was hitting God but now revealed, and the earthly pro prophetic program which was written from the beginning onwards, and then will continue Hebrews to Revelation. Hebrews to Revelation is all scripture for the Jews during the Great Tribulation, like Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I mean, that's glorious, but he's not my shepherd because I'm not a sheep. Are you despising this? No, I don't despise everything. I just don't want to uh, get confused about my identity. Because when I believe the gospel of, of the cross, I, if I'm a Jew or a Gentile by birth, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Because I lose that identity. If I'm a man or woman, it doesn't matter. If I'm a bond of free, it doesn't matter. I become, God makes of me, and you who believes this, a member in particular of the one body, which is the revelation of the mystery, which is the gospel of Christ, which is the body of Christ, which is headed to heavenly places. So God is going to regain the control of the heavenly place, dispossessing those principal powers, the means and thrones, and Satan and the prince and the power of the earth down, 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 and the body of Christ in glorified bodies. The members of the body of Christ, which are going to go to the judgment seat of Christ, they're going to receive reward accordingly and give a position. He knows, he knows, he knows best, he knows best all the time. My part is to simply believe. Trust, confide, and believe his words. Not the theory, the, in, the interpretation, the ideas of, of this guy, that guy, or my, my opinions. I have no the authority. The authority is in the word of God, in the pure words of God, pure words of God. The word of truth. Five times, pure words of God. Psalm 12, the words of the Lord are pure words, and they are a shield unto them. They put, the, you know, they find refuge in, the, in those words of the Lord. 
Praise God, you know. Mm. What a great God. <laughs> he said to the twelve. When he sent them, in Matthew 10, verse 5, if I remember what I said. Do not go, which I understand means don't go. <laughs> no, no. Into the way of the Gentiles. Why, Jesus? Because he has a problem for the Gentiles. A problem was, do not go in the, in the, the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the Azovese. I'm not sent about to the Lord ship and And when you go preach, the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God. Heal the sick. For real. No. Okay, now we're gonna pray for the sick uh, in a line. And when we pray, we lay the hands of the Holy Spirit, which is gonna fall on you and you're gonna get healed. They go there, they they, they they you know, they lay hands, nobody gets healed. But people fall because laying in the spirit. No, they push. I know I was there, I seen it. Sometimes I did that, and I remember people were touching, they would, they would jump because the emotions, they were all hyped up, the music before, and the screaming, and the jumping, and the leaping. That's not, that's not the, God, the work of God, that's the work of the flesh. Flesh on the flesh, like what about this? You want to identify with the, with the Lord ship of the other reason when you're not. And then they come with a the replacement the, the theology, because he's a fail. That's it. That's us now. We are Israel now. No, we're not Israel. My name is Roberto Gagliardi. When I received the mail in my mailbox, it's to Roberto Gagliardi. Address this and this and this. My neighbor or my neighbors, they got mailboxes near. If I go and open one of the letters, it's a crime. And there is written that, you know, my, my neighbor, Joe Smith, I grab one of his letters from his bed box. I open it and there's it's just me that your uncle died and left you one million dollars. And I go and I run to the notary to the lawyer and say, I want my million dollars. Say, okay, sit down, don't worry. Document, identity, eh? Then the, the address, what's your name? Roberto Gagliardi, Joe Smith. Sorry. This is not written to you. I cannot give you the money. Actually, did you come in possess of this? You take, that's a crime, you know, I can call the police. Or was a mistake? Was a mistake. So call Joe Smith. You know what I mean? You go around claiming the promises that God gave the to 12 tribes. The old covenant, new covenant, they both to you. We are the grace, no covenants. We are not Israel. We, we get saved without the law, without covenants. Without Israel. A salvation was of the Jews, and it's going to be in the future, at the second coming. Do you get the picture? Do you get the picture that nowadays we have an army never ending of people that go to church on Sunday today? Is it is the 12th of November 2023? At the moment it's afternoon. If I was still in the sect, I would be in church all excited already. I wonder what kind of word the Lord gave to the pastor. And it was always the same thing. Maybe it was a fresh word because he kept the Bible in the fridge and then, <laughs> just kidding. The reality is, don't make the mistake to think or to identify yourself with Israel. You're going to be very disappointed. You're going to look for healing and don't receive it. They say, God has love me and they're going to give you, you know, the least of the excuses why don't God didn't heal you. You didn't pray enough. You didn't read the Bible enough. You didn't tithe. You didn't give the offerings. You were stingy. You were jealous, uh, you, you got sit, uh, secret sins, he, he, you know, unconfessed secret sins. Uh, you kicked the cat too many times, whatever it is. That's why God cannot heal you. What? When the Lord gave this commandment to the twelve, heal the sick, cast the devil, see, you know, Cast the devils. Can you imagine? Cast the devils with the word. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. What about that? <laughs> Who's doing that? Oh, they go around, you know, in somewhere in America, they, they use the snakes. And they get beaten and die. Oh, because Mark 16 says, you know, I said to him, you know, why don't you drink some drano? Show me that if you drink anything, God, you know, 
deadly poisonous is not going to hurt you because you'll go. But you're clowns. Oh, if you really have, okay, let me just ask you. If you really have the gift of healing, but real, why don't you go in the local hospital in the world where these beautiful children got cancer or heart problem, whatever it is, and just heal them in the mighty and glorious name of Christ? You don't go because you haven't got that power. Because everybody's going to say that you're a charlatan, whoever you are. Oh, you know, from your pulpit in, in the four walls of your local church building, it's not a church, <laughs> you're going to make believe all the gullible people like I was, that you got this gift. Because first you say, Kurrabatatopita, whatever it is, give it the interpretation. They say, ah, oh, the anointing, the anointing. The people want to be near you because there's the anointing. And this anointing is absolutely zero, nothing, nothing happens. It's just a circus. That's not the way to treat the Word of God. Because this book that we study, read, and preach, this is the Word of God. I cannot play with this. Oh, John 3.16, it's wonderful, but it's not speaking to me. He said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever would believe on Him and should not perish by everlasting life. If a person today just believes that, he's still lost. That person needs to receive the gospel of the cross so the operation of God can take place and God can take this person out of Adam into Christ, seal them with the Holy Ghost of promise, as he said in, Romans, in Ephesians 1.13, and seal them to the day of redemption, the precious possession, unto the presence of his glory. Wow. Let's talk about resurrection. So when Christ was risen, all right, Luke 24, 6, is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when you was yet in Galilee. The twelve, they didn't understand. For them, the cross was madness. What is this? Why is God to die? Our Messiah? Huh? And what about the resurrection? Ah. They didn't believe, you know. Saying, the Lord is risen indeed, and happened to Simon. Simon didn't believe. When therefore he was risen from the dead, this disciple remembered he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said afterwards. You and I have to believe the, the resurrection now. Even though we never saw Jesus, we never saw Paul, we never saw Peter and James and John, have we? Have you seen Isaiah recently walking in the streets? Or Ezekiel? Or Amos or Habakkuk? Have you? Have you seen Moses? What about Timothy? Have you seen Timothy? <laughs> we have a book. Oh, so you just believe what is written in the book. <laughs> they say, you know. What about you? You will study geography in a book. And you don't even know if those maps are correct. You just trust that they are. And that's been found out they are not. But anyway, you study philosophy. Oh, Parmenides, you know, and then Socrates and Plato, Aristotle. You, you fill up your, your head and your mouth with these big words. Vain, vain babblings. What about space? We went to the moon. When? How? How you, can you go on, on a light? Go in the book of Genesis and read that God created two lights, a greater light to give light to the dead, the sun, and a lesser light to give light to the night, in the night, and the stars. And he set them in the firmament of heaven, and they go in a circuit under the firmament, and we live on a flat stationary plane on pillars, and God holds the pillars. And it sits on the circle of the earth. The earth is a footstool. Have you ever seen a footstool like a boat? Nah. We don't spin. Go out, go to the beach, have a look. Flat forever. Get an icon, as I do an icon. Get, the, you know, to the horizon where you don't see anything and then go with a zoom and you start to see boats coming. It's a question of perspective, the capacity of your eyes to a certain extent, and also there is the blurring, the atmosphere and everything, the heat, whatever it is. The reality is. The Bible gives you 100 verses that tells you about what created and how created and what kind of earth we're living in, which anyway is temporary because it's going to create new heavens and new earth. 
but you believe science. <laughs> but you don't believe in the Bible. And you have warnings concerning that. Not to fall for science or false recall. <sighs> this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. Jesus knew he was going to be risen. Well, he was going to rise himself, the Father was going to rise him, and the Holy Ghost. Because we're talking about God the head, you know. This glorious God that we worship and serve, praise be to his glorious name, is absolutely glorious. It's God the Father, God the Word, the Son, incarnated, becomes the, the Son of God, you know, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Open in a legend that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto is Christ. That's Paul preaching to the unbelieving Jews in the synagogues. He goes, well, what, of course, where do you, you think you want to go? Now we're going in, in Romans 8, 34, we start to enter deep in the mystery. Who is it that condemns? It is Christ that died, yeah, rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So in our gospel now, yeah, we know that God gave his only begotten son to Israel, to the world, then Israel. But what good would be that to me? I'm still, you know, a sinner. How am I going to expiate, how do you say in English, uh, how am I going to pay for, for my sins? Because I got a sin debt, you know, gigantic. Well, I was born in Adam, which is a sinner, so I got the Adamic sin, uh, sin nature, so that's why I sin all the time. With thoughts, words, deeds, depends. More or less, sometimes intensely, sometimes lightly, but the reality is I live in a condition in the flesh. I know that in my flesh was no good thing, says Paul. Says Paul. And I found out it's true. But anyway, what I'm going to give in exchange for the salvation of my soul? Whatever I give is not accepted. It's written in the prophetic. My righteous, filthy rights. My works, good for nothing. Dead works of the flesh. And what about the fact that before I get saved, I am dead in trespasses and sins, separated from God, dead in trespasses and sins. I'm a child of wrath, a child of disobedience, like anybody else, like everybody, like others. I'm an ungodly sinner, I'm an enemy of God, even if I don't go around swearing and blaspheming God or uh, killing people or doing terrible things. I'm a good person, I'm a good father, a good mother, uh, a good son, a good brother, whatever. I need to be taken out of this Adam and put in the new Adam, the man from heaven, Christ. And that I can't do on my own. With my effort, I can't do it. Actually, if I try, I become implicitly an enemy of the cross, bypassing the cross. Oh yeah, I'm going to bless Israel now, because bless so those who bless Israel. No, in this dispensation, is you know, go to to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and blessing Israel, the Lord is going to take back his people to the land in the future. At the moment, those guys, they are not the Israel of God. <gasps> I have all the evangelical world against. Ah, 1948 was not an operation of God. End of story. I can prove it, but that's for another day. What have I got to do? Nothing. That's the point. What have I got to do? Yeah, uh, uh, nothing. And actually, that's really good news. Because it already has been done by Christ on our behalf. How did Christ die for our sins? Notice, he didn't die for sin, for sins, for our sins. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures, not an invention of Paul, you know. And that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You believe that? Every part of that, that bare resurrection. God, who knows everything and sees everything, he seals you. He saves you. You are saved, and you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, some people say, already happened at the cross. At the cross, we were not there until Christ revealed this to Paul. Nobody knew. The disciples uh, look at Christ on the cross and say, We're finished! 
Let's, you know, make the, the tzukes back home. Let's go back home. I'll go back to fish. Peter and, and company, you know. Damn it, what about me? What about you? What about us? 2,000 years later, we read in this book. What do we do? Oh, let's go to church. Let's pray the sinner's prayer. Why should God even listen to my sinner's prayer when I am not in the temple under the covenant? There is not a public, and so I'm the... You know, I'm the I'm the public, and there is not a Pharisee. And I'm a culpa, I'm a culpa, I'm a culpa, culpa, like when I was Catholic, you know. Why should he? Why do you think I'm so important that if I accept Jesus into my heart and make him Lord of my life, you must be joking for real. No, you drank the cool head of religion. You can't make Jesus Lord of your life. He's already Lord with or without you. If everybody disappears, he's still Lord. He's been always Lord. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. We're talking about Almighty God in the person of His Son, His only begotten Son. Not His only Son, His only begotten. He begot them in resurrection. <laughs> of course, He was His Son when He was born in the manger. But at that time, you and I could not be saved. Or oh, we could become proselyte. Of Israel, but you can't even do this now because Israel is fallen, is blind, is unsaved. There is no Israel God on this earth. Paul gives a lot of importance to the resurrection, not because, well, you know, let's talk about it because without resurrection, if there be no resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15 13, if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is no reason. And the crest being no reason, then it's a preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. But now it's Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that's left. And we are buried with him in baptism, where also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who was raised from the dead. That's an operation of God. That's why when you get saved by grace through faith, no words, the gospel of grace, the gospel of the cross, it's not a question of what you feel or you don't feel. Possibly you might feel zero, nothing. In your heart, you believe this. Yes, Christ did die for my sins. According to scripture, he was buried, he rose again. I believe this. Yeah. God says that you believe. You don't have all this emotion. Oh, you might feel terrible because you consider your sins. What happens to me still now when I think of the terrible things I've done in the course of my 74 years? I got not enough tears to, to, to shed. So now I'm gonna confess my sins, all of them. I start now, I stay there three years, and when I get up, I, I forgot lots of them. <laughs> if one sin is unforgiven, I'm gonna go to hell. One sin is enough, one sin. But Christ paid for my sins. I received the atonement already. This salvation is a sure thing because it's an operation of God. The same God who created the heaven and the earth. The same God that created the nation of Israel. The same God who knows everything is the Almighty God. And you know, Satan is the prince of the power of the air with his minions, he's blinding people. Don't listen to this gospel of grace. Come to church and pay tithes. No, my friend. Paul says, if you have been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. That's the point. This if is not a doubt, sir. Given you are risen with Christ, because what happened is this. When you believe in the, go the gospel of the death and resurrection of Christ, as the final answer, the solution to your salvation for now and eternity, God saves you, seals you, baptizes you with the Spirit, by the, by the Spirit into the death of Christ. Into Christ, no into, you know, you're not baptizing water. You're not a priest, a king, entering the ministry that you are to do ceremonial washing and everything. You can't follow Jesus. I, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm, I know people that go all the way to Jerusalem to be baptized in the Jordan River. Yes, and mysticism, you know. The, the place where Jesus was baptized. Walk in the streets where Jesus walked. This Jerusalem, Jesus is going to destroy. What about that? <laughs> the Via Dolorosa, you know. There is this guy that goes around with the cross of the world playing super holy. What? What? You need to believe the truth. 
Not the fairy tales of religion. Okay. I just close this. And I go to Romans 3. 23. For all sin can show to the glory of God. So now, if you don't believe this book, ciao, go, go, go play tennis, whatever. If you believe this book, follow me. For all have sinned, not follow me, follow the, what I read. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Does it say a son? And because people say, I'm not a sinner, I'm not so bad. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Does that include you? Well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, your mom, your father, your uncle. Your grandfather put on everybody before, and your offspring, everybody is a sinner. For all sinners can show to the glory of God. Yeah, but not the Pope. Yes. <laughs> no presidents. Yes. Kings. Yes. Queens. Yes. My neighbor. Yes. You. Yes. Everybody is a sinner. For all sinners can show to the glory. Let God be true and every man a liar. I tell you, I repeat, if you don't believe this book, but if you believe, let God be true and every man a liar. Romans 3, 24. Is it? Yeah. For all sin and come short of the glory of God. But then the good news is being justified, which means made just, freely, <laughs> by His grace through the redemption that is in the word of baptism, in my denomination, in my prayers, in my fasting. No, that isn't the person of Christ, in Christ Jesus. For all sin and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through redemption, that is in Christ Jesus. Simple as that. The same book of Romans, just for clarification. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? There's no water here, is it? No, you not. That's it. All churches baptized. They baptized children, grown-ups, teenagers, on the deathbed. What? What? What about the blood of Christ? What about the cross? You're not going to the kingdom. God is not building the kingdom. Oh, I really don't like this Roberto. No, how you can hate me. I don't care. I'm dead with Christ. The reality is, you got to know the truth. Oh, you are hyper dispensation. No, you created this world. The straw man, like many others, because you don't want to accept the reality that you are a sinner. You can't save yourself. There is nothing you can do now, tomorrow, 10 years from now. You did... Nothing that you do will ever gain you salvation because salvation is a free gift of God to all those who believe. But you know, universally said, everybody say, because Jesus died for all, all men. He died for everyone. Especially, it's a, it's a savior of, of everyone, especially all those who believe. In particular, those who believe. So salvation is there for everyone, but people need to believe. To allow God to do the operation. To take them out of Adam and put some into Christ. Because he said, no, you know, there's so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ. There is no water here. No. We're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, you see? By the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Now, there are many videos I've done, but I want to go here. For sin shall not have dominion over you. We are not under the law, but under grace. Go and tell this to the churches. What? No, under the law. No, you're not. The law will condemn you every day. Verse 6, 23, in chapter 6, Romans, verse 23, For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Don't try to pay for this gift. That's a felony. It's an offense. God wants to give you a gift you want to pay. Now I will show God how I can walk the walk and talk, talk the talk and walk the walk. You will fall flat on your face every single day. And you will say, why, Lord? <laughs> you might grow in maturity and overcome certain areas, no problem. But if you think you stop sinning altogether, that's another heresy, big one, because you live in a torment. You have to know that all sins are forgiven. Ephesians 1, 7. Colossians 1, 14. The wages of sin is death. That's the consequence. Why do you think people die? No, I'm not going to die. You're going to die too. I'm going to die. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody dead? Being 74, I've seen a lot, including my wonderful father. Wow, what a man. But then, there he goes. Rigo Mortis, I looked at him, I don't know, that's not my father anymore. Now, thank God he believed this glorious gospel, so it's with the Lord. So I have this glorious, no hope, certainty. I'm going to see him again in a glorified body, which is much better than it was, was before. But guess what? The way you've seen is death. It's physical death, but also spiritual death. You don't want to be spiritually separated eternally from God. You don't want. How do we even talk about hell and the lake of fire? Just not be with the Lord for eternity, with Him. That's already hell for me. Because only God is the source of all good and goodness and, and, and righteousness and love and hope and glory. The way of sin is death. Not to mention that if you die lost, there is no RIP for you. Oh, you know, those alive hypocrites. Rest in peace. He was such a good man. She was a fantastic woman. Well, maybe. But, you know, how many people died? We, we will remember you, you know, the commemoration, commemoration day, whatever. Memorial day. You, you might think I'm an anarchic. No, I'm very realistic. We shall remember you. What? For a little while. But then you die yourself. And you got to get forgotten like them. Do you, do you know the names of all the soldiers that died in the Second World War? <laughs> we should remember you. I don't know the name. I know the name of my grandfathers. I know the name of two. Two. Oh. Uh, Great grandmother, actually, I don't know the great grandfather of one part of the family from my mother. I don't know on my side, on my father's side. I know his father and mother, my nonno, my, my, my grandfather and grandmother. That's it. I don't know the generation before. And you go for 400 years backwards, it's a tremendous number of people that gave it the possibility that you exist now, but you don't even know them. You know who knows everybody and everything? That's God. And if you are in Christ, He knows you. The seal of the Lord is sure. He knows those who belong to Him. You know, I can think that you are saved because you told me that you believe in Jesus. You, generally speaking. You know, I'm not pointing the finger to anybody. Just, but do I really know that? Oh, I said to you, I'm, I believe, but do you really know that? The only one that can read my heart, my situation, and knows me or not, that's God. Now, let me tell you something in Romans 8. It says something that I found glorious and terrible. Ter 
Uh. Yeah, aspetta. Oh. Yeah. It says Romans 8, 8, so then that that are in the flesh cannot please God. So until you say you are in the flesh, you are a flesh, a natural man. Doesn't matter what you do or you don't do, you cannot please God. What about that? But then he said, but he is talking to the body of Christ in Rome, the one he is writing to and also to us. Ye are not in the flesh. You know, notice ye are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, did you know this capital S is so big that the spirit of God dwell in you? And then it says, so big because are you saved? Have you been baptized by the spirit into the death of Christ, into Jesus Christ? Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, it's none of his. I find this absolutely terrifying. Now, if any man or woman included, have not the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. To have the Spirit of Christ, you need to believe the Gospel of Christ. You never believe the Gospel of Christ, you don't have the Spirit of Christ, so you're not sealed until the day of redemption, the first possession, until the praise of his glory. You know how many times it's written sealed? Three times. The earnest, three times. Sealed in, the, in this, the sealing of the Spirit. And if Christ be new, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is left because of righteousness. Your body is dead because of sin. In Romans 7, Paul explains a tremendous conflict that goes through. In Romans 7, he says, I know that in me, brackets, that is in my flesh, close bracket, dwells no good thing. The good I want to do, I don't do, the, the, the bad I don't want to do, that. that oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death. And then they say, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes! Christ be new, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Make sure you have the spirit of Christ dwelling in you. Ha. Believe and receive the glorious gospel of the cross. Where you do nothing, but you believe Christ has done it all. You know that song, Christ paid it all, but then they want the tithe from you. Double! Tongue, snakes. The tithe puts you under the law. It's a curse. It's not required of you. You want to give all your money to help a brother or sister? That's your freedom. You want to help? A That's your freedom. God loves a generous giver. You know, a joyful giver. Generosity should be a trait of the the grace, the spirit of grace in you. Yeah. But not that you give the tithe, ten percent of your income, which you was never. Never money was food. You're not a farmer in Israel. There is no temple. There is no Levi Levitical priesthood. There is no... You got to bring the food in the, in, in the storehouse of the temple. Oh, spiritual eyes, you know, the, the house of God. This, no, this, the church where you go, the building, it's just a building. Brick and mortars. Brick and mortars. The church, the body of Christ is you, 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 you people that believe and receive it. Christ dwells in you. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by a spirit that dwells in you. This is talking about the new body that we're going to receive at the catching up of the body and the resurrection. I need to stop here. I need to make only clear one thing. The death of Christ is very important because he died for our sins. His burial is very important because he really died, he was buried, and his resurrection is absolutely essential because if he is not resurrected, all right, then you got a dead Christ. Religions got a dead Christ. For them, it's still stuck, the little puppet on this piece of wood or, or even gold, you know, with a little diamond. Very nice, you know, with a little piece of clothing a little wound here on the side, and maybe a drop or two of blood from the, the, the crown of thorns. <laughs> when, when you understand and you, when you read the, the crucifixion, you know, you know that that's not the way it went. Because before, he, before being crucified, 
ir zi 13 lashes. Four is three times anyway. <laughs> that is greater, no? No. The Lord says you are a point of sufferings of all sorts. Physical, yes, but also spiritual. You know the spiritual suffering when you see somebody that you love that doesn't want to receive the gospel or the grace of God, but still wants to go through the, the motion or religion or whatever it is? Could be Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Methodist, Pentecostal, uh, Word of Faith, uh, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons. They knock at my door, you know, they live very near. There is a, a kingdom hell, a whole. And every time they come, I try to give them the gospel of grace. And they just look at me with glassy eyes, like, who's this guy? And I even use the Bible. They say, oh, a new Bible in this verse. Verse they didn't even know was there, because they think they, uh, they are the witnesses of Jehovah, which in reality is Israel, because it's written in the, in the book of Isaiah. You are my witness to Israel. If you read in the contest, 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 otherwise if you take a text out of contest, it's a pretext, it's a disaster. Right division, rightly divided word of truth. Israel, the faithful Israel, the little flock, the believers, the remnant, the unfaithful Israel, the, you know, the backslidden, unfaithful, apostate Israel. And then you got to consider old covenant, new covenant for Israel, Jeremiah 31, 31, and so forth. The operations of God with Israel are completely different. For the kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom of heaven, comes down. The new Jerusalem comes down from heaven. We go in heavenly places. We don't go and live in the new Jerusalem. The normal Paul is not in the foundations of the new Jerusalem. We're going to read the book of Revelation. There are the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now, for, for us, Jesus Christ is not the Lamb of God. It's much more than that. You know why? Because he's Lord, the Savior of the body. Romans 5 tells, you know, but God commends his love towards us and why we were yet without strength. Sin is Christ died for us. You cannot beat that. We were never under the thing, you know, that it's going to be a lamb sacrifice. You understand? Praise God is the Lamb of God. But praise God is the Savior of the body. Is my Lord, is my Savior, my Redeemer. I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, can't catch it. I don't know you know otherwise I wouldn't have any hope oh I can go from one gener uh, this denomination to others to another I, I did that with my wife we were so distraught we just couldn't take anymore the lies of Pentecostalism I mean you might you might call me a slow learner 40 years but I, uh, I was convinced it was okay you know yeah it's a problem I was blinded by the enemy. So we started to go from one church to another one, to another one, where they're all the same. All promising things they cannot perform and, and give. All giving you actually a tremendous delusion and a disappointment because, but why doesn't God heal me? That, can, can't you see that that's... What about Paul when he had whatever he wanted to pray? He prayed three times, thrice three times. There was an angel of Satan buffeted him because of the abundance of revelation he, to keep him uh, at bay. And he said, Lord, you know, wh who were they? The Jews tormenting him? Uh, people say the eyes. I don't know what it is. Go and read. He prayed three times and the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient for thee. Now it's the first in the pattern, isn't it? If the grace of God is sufficient for Paul, the first to be saved in the new dispensation, dispensation of grace, the first member of the body of Christ, Acts 9, until they catch you up of the body of Christ, then it's got to be sufficient for me too. In every aspect. Who am I anyway? Without the revelation that is in the book, what do I know? Nothing. Nothing. My, Paul says to Timothy, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He doesn't say like in New Age, just believe in yourself. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Paul says, be rooted and built up in Christ. Like a tree, you know, that's got the, this foundations, they go down in these this roots. They call roots in Australia, in English. 
the roots and then these roots go down, go wide, and then they go the trunk. Uh, uh, you know, the park where here, I'll go here to see this incredible white white gum trees, you know, Australians. I love nature. I, I paint, you know, I take photos. And I say, wow, beside everything, I'll go build this, you know. They start with a little seed, typical, typical. The power of God in nature, in creation, is like, you know, the power of God in resurrection. When you're resurrecting somebody good for nothing like me and you, because we're equal, you know, you need to have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you. To have the Spirit of Christ, you need to believe. That's all. And belief is not a work. Without works of sort, of any type. Not even a prayer, just to repeat. Repeat these words. Which words? Every time they change. Oh, so God is going to change. Oh, this guy is going to say, no. Nah. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Did you read when it's written? Romans 9, 10, 11, three chapters. And Paul, who knows the scripture from inside out, writes about Israel, history, and in the past, the present, the future, the restoration of Israel and everything. <sighs> Believe in the gospel of the grace of God. One hour, I got to stop. Ah. Father, we thank you for your word of truth and we give you glory. We bless you because we are blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly blessings in Christ. We thank you that you make us accepted in the beloved. Blessed and complete in Christ, Colossians 2 10. And all our sins are forgiven. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 7 and Colossians 1 14. And we're delivered from this present evil world. And we're now we are poverty. We are your property. You sealed us with your spirit of promise. We are yours. We are justified. We receive the atonement. We belong to you for eternity. Father, thank you. Thank you, our Lord and Savior. Thank you. Amen. I hope that this helps you. Grace and peace to all. Thank you for your patience. One, one hour. Thank you. Bye.